Second class requirement number one, part A. Demonstrate how a compass works and how to orient a map. Explain what map symbols mean. If you like hiking and exploring new places, then learning to use a map and a compass can be very important. You've probably had some experience looking at highway or city maps on family trips. These maps are like drawings of the roads and cities as seen from a high-flying airplane. The maps you use for hiking are very similar, but they show the kinds of land features and information more useful to hikers and campers. The United States Geological Survey, or USGS, makes topographic maps, also called quadrangle maps or quads. You can often find quadrangle maps at sporting goods or camping stores in the area you'll be hiking. There's also contact information in your Boy Scout handbook for ordering maps directly from the USGS, or you can visit their website. Take a close look at the symbols in the margin of a USGS map. The shapes and colors represent actual features in the landscape. Green for vegetation, black for man-made things like roads and buildings, blue for water, and brown for contour lines. Contour lines on a map indicate the shape of the land. To picture this, draw washable ink lines around the hills and valleys of your closed fist. Then, flatten out your hand like a map. The change in elevation represented by each contour line will be noted on your map. Once you become familiar with quadrangle maps, you'll be ready to learn how to use a map and compass together. The idea behind today's modern compass was discovered thousands of years ago by travelers in China. They noticed that a magnetized needle on top of a floating chip of wood always swung around pointing north. It seemed like magic. Today, we know the Earth is like a huge magnet with one pole of the magnet in northern Canada. That's why one end of every compass needle is drawn toward the northern point. That end is usually painted red or marked with an N to indicate magnetic north. Most of the maps you'll use in scouting have been drawn with their tops aimed at true north. In other words, if you could extend the map boundaries far enough upward, they would eventually reach the North Pole at the top of the Earth. As you can see, true north at the North Pole and magnetic north in Canada are more than a thousand miles apart. That's why many maps have arrows drawn in the bottom margin. The true north arrow points towards the North Pole, while the magnetic north arrow points toward northern Canada. The difference between the direction of the two arrows, measured in degrees, is called declination. Each compass is like a circle, divided into 360 parts called degrees. Each degree points a slightly different direction from the next, so the degrees of declination between the two norths on your map definitely affect how you use your map and compass together. Since your compass points to magnetic north, one way to align your map with your compass is to draw magnetic north reference lines on your map. Starting with the magnetic north arrow on the map, extend a straight line from the bottom to the top of the map. Then use a pencil and ruler to draw a series of parallel lines, one ruler width apart, all pointing to magnetic north. Now you're ready to orient your map when you're out in the field. That simply means lining up your map with the actual landscape the map represents. The most basic way of orienting a map is to look at the land around you for features such as bridges, buildings, and hills. Then turn the map so the map symbols for those features match the actual landscape. If you have a compass, you can orient your map more accurately by rotating your compass until north, or 360 degrees, touches the arrow showing the direction of travel. Next, place the edge of the compass along any of the magnetic north reference lines you've drawn on your map. Then, turn the map and compass as a unit until the compass needle lines up with the orienting arrow in the compass housing. At that point, your map should be properly oriented with the landscape. A good game for practicing with a compass is to put a blindfold on one of your patrol members so he can just see out of the bottom and read the compass in his hands. Mark the spot where he starts. Then, have him use the compass to find magnetic north or zero degrees and pace off 10 yards in that direction. Stop and turn until he faces due east 90 degrees and step off 10 yards again. Then, 10 yards due south 180 degrees. And finally, 10 yards due west 270 degrees. If it's done perfectly, he should end up exactly on the mark where he started, having made a 10 yard by 10 yard square. 
You can have a contest to see which patrol member comes closest to a starting point. And as you get better, you can lay out courses with more complicated bearings and directions. It's a great way to have fun and improve your compass skills. That's second class requirement 1A. Demonstrate how a compass works and how to orient a map. And remember, your Boy Scout handbook has lots more information on how to use a compass with a map.